Hello, dear sisters in Christ. My name is Father Kevin Fox. I am a priest of the Diocese of Cleveland. Uh, I'm very excited to be able to talk to you today uh, to share a little bit of my thoughts on uh, friendship with, with our Lord Jesus and uh, some of uh, how that has played out within my own life uh, and how I understand it in, in uh, discerning a vocation. And I will talk about that uh, in a little bit. But first, <clears throat> let's begin with a little prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name he may give you. This I command you, love one another. Heavenly Father, we offer you praise and thanksgiving for all of your gifts and blessings for the gift of the love that you have shown us in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the love that is mediated to us through the friends that you have given to us here on this earth. We thank you for the gift of our vocations, whatever they may be. We ask you, Father, that you continue to pour forth your Holy Spirit upon us, that you might draw us ever closer to you. We ask this in the name of your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I mentioned, I will be talking a little bit about uh, friendship with Jesus. I'm actually going to be talking quite a bit about uh, a hero of mine, J.R.R. Tolkien. Before I do that, I wanted to share just a, a little bit about myself. As I mentioned, I'm a priest of the Diocese of Cleveland. I was ordained on May 18th of 2019, so... Uh, it's only about a year, depending on when you actually uh, get to see this video. It might be right around my, my one-year anniversary. Very happy as a priest. Uh, it's been quite a year, a very strange year, but a very grace-filled year. Uh, and I'm very happy as a priest, very happy to be a celibate man. Uh, I got to be close friends with the Mercedarian Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament uh, over, over the past few years. They were studying and taking classes at uh, at the seminary where where we study in Cleveland, and we just sort of uh, fell into a friendship with one another. Uh, it's been a great joy and a great treasure, a great gift from uh, from our loving God to uh, to me. I, I hope I hope to them as well. Um, I think the I, I can't help but feel like maybe maybe it has um, that's been good for them as well, since they uh, flattered me by reaching out and asking me to help out with this uh, with this virtual discernment retreat uh, and asking me to put together this little video message and trusting me with the uh, with the content. Uh, I over the years have actually I've just gotten closer and closer to them and I still remain uh, very close both with the, the the convent that's here in in Cleveland uh, as well as with the sisters who are in Gainesville, Florida. As I mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a hero of mine, J.R.R. Tolkien. If you don't know who that is, he's the the author of The Lord of the Rings, which is a spectacular uh, spectacular book. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it, not probably not at all, uh, but it is absolutely fantastic. I first read it when I was probably in middle school, uh, and it's a, it's a great just adventure story. It's a great little fantasy book if you're not into adventure or fantasy. Uh, it confuses me, but you probably won't like the, like this book very much. And uh, years ago, while I was still obviously while I was still in seminary, I had the great fortune of. Uh, uh, to get to talk to uh, Father Father Timothy Gallagher, and uh, he had been uh, teaching a group of us the rules for the discernment of spirits, and uh, I had a chance to sit down and talk to him, and I wanted to thank him for um, all the everything that he had done and everything he had been teaching us, and he used a lot of examples of images from the Lord of the Rings in a lot of his talks, and I wanted to to thank him for that, how much it spoke to me, and uh, we wound up talking for a, for a while about uh, about Tolkien. And he encouraged me to start reading through his uh, his his personal letters, his personal correspondence. Uh, and so and so I did, and uh, 
boy oh boy is it a treasure trove. Now Tolkien was a, uh, a very, very devout Catholic man. Uh, he was born at the end of the 19th century uh, and he was actually baptized uh, Anglican. Uh, his family was, was Anglican. Uh, after his father died though, his mother converted and brought uh, both him and his younger brother Hilary uh, with her into the church. Uh, when she died, uh, she uh, had entrusted uh, her son John and her son Hilary to the care of her very close priest friend, Father Francis Morgan, who was a priest of the Birmingham Oratory uh, in England, which is actually the oratory that uh, uh, John Henry Cardinal Newman had founded. She was very close to him uh, and trusted him to take care of her sons, and so he and so he did. And it really shows throughout. Um, really throughout the whole course of his life. And uh, I always I, I always want to say to anyone who wants to try and question the, the Catholicity of Tolkien's, uh, you know, his fiction really ought to just take a, a few minutes to read some of his other things in which he gets very, very explicit about his Catholic faith. And so there's a, uh, a line that he wrote in uh, into a letter that he wrote to his son. He had Three sons and a daughter. The oldest, uh, his oldest son, John, uh, actually was a Catholic priest. And uh, he wrote letters to his children constantly. And it was just the correspondence between a father and son. And he talked about anything and everything under the sun uh, and just what was, everything was going on. His son, Michael, was serving in World War II. And Tolkien wanted to just talk to him about, uh, about marriage, actually. Uh, about what marriage is and what it isn't. And he wrote this really beautiful letter and it ends with a line that I find has has become pretty famous and uh, it's used often as sort of proof of, of Tolkien's Catholic identity uh, and it's true but I'm going to talk about this quite a bit here and perhaps you've heard it before it makes its rounds on social media every once in a while out of the darkness of my life so much frustrated I put before you the one great thing to love on earth, the blessed sacrament. There you will find romance, glory, honor, fidelity, and the true way of all your loves upon earth, and more than that, death. By the divine paradox, that which ends life and demands the surrender of all, and yet by the taste or foretaste of which alone can what you seek in your earthly relationships, love, faithfulness, joy, be maintained, or take on that complexion of reality, of eternal endurance, which every man's heart desires. Uh, and of course, it's, it's, a, it's beautiful, and it, it beautifully indicates uh, Tolkien's uh, devotion, particularly to the Blessed Sacrament. And, uh, and it is certainly all that, but it's very, it's very interesting that he he actually uses it as kind of a cap on a conversation about marriage. So in the whole course of the, of the letter, he talks about marriage in a very uh, non-romantic fashion. He actually goes on and on about how, uh, if basically if you expect your spouse to satisfy all the romantic longings of your heart, you will very quickly find yourself in the divorce courts. He says that uh, marriage is a an opportunity to practice Christian charity. It's a place and opportunity, first and foremost, for you to lay down your life out of love for the other. Uh, it's not about satisfying you and your desires. He says, and if you try and do that, your, your spouse is not capable of doing that. And so if you try and do that, it's all going to fall apart. And he caps the conversation with this here. And in effect, he says, don't try and have your spouse satisfy the romantic longings of your heart because that's what god does god satisfies the romantic longings of your heart but then he goes on and says so you have to die to that desire in, in some way but that's the, div the divine paradox that on the other side of death is glorious resurrection and so if we look first to, if he's telling his son, if you look first to God to satisfy the romantic longings of your heart and give up letting your spouse do that, then the divine paradox is that your spouse will be the one who, by, through whom God satisfies the romantic longings of your heart. <clears throat> now, Tolkien is uh, talking to his son explicitly about marriage. 
And so he puts it in marital context. But I do believe that he could have spoken just as clearly and just as explicitly and used so much of the same language for uh, the vocation of a celibate man or a woman, for a priest or a consecrated religious. Uh, that he could use a, lot of the, use a lot of the same language. So if we expect or hope for uh, our vocation, our secondary vocation, our priesthood, consecrated religious life, if I look for my parish or you look for a religious community that's going to just be that perfect fit, uh, and it's just gonna, everything's just gonna go right, and everything's just gonna satisfy, and it's gonna be happy all the time in every way. Uh, and you're, and you give up on this thing or that thing because, oh well, it's just not, it's just not quite hitting my heart right, quite the way, the way that I expect it to. Well, <clears throat> it's not the job of my priesthood, of my parish or a religious community to satisfy uh, the romantic longings of everyone's heart. That's not what it's, it's not what it's for. It is a place and an opportunity for us to practice Christian charity, a place for us to lay down our life out of love in obedience to our, to our Lord's commandment. If we're going to be friends of Christ our Lord who lay down his life for us, then we are in turn called to lay down our life out of love. But again, there's that divine paradox. If we give up, in a sense, and die to that desire for uh, the romantic longings of our heart to be satisfied by, you know, by, by my parish or by a religious community uh, to, to satisfy the romantic longings of our heart, if we give up that and instead look to the Lord to satisfy the romantic longings of our heart, our desire for, uh, to look to the Lord to satisfy our desire for love and faithfulness and joy our, that we desire in all of our earthly relationships. Give that up and look to the Lord to satisfy it. Well, then suddenly all of our earthly relationships will become charged with love and faithfulness and joy. Our vocation will then become the means by which God satisfies all the romantic longings of our heart. So in the course of my, <clears throat> my own life and my own discernment, I, uh, I struggled for a, for a long time because, uh, because, I, because I had all of these, these desires and these longings and it was, it was hard to imagine how I could ever be, how I could ever be happy uh, as a priest, how could I ever be happy as a, as a celibate man? You know, there's all these desires and longings in my heart that just doesn't seem, I just don't see how it can happen. I don't see how it can work out. And then I started to pray differently. I entered into a different kind of relationship with our Lord. And I remember the day, <clears throat> there was a particular day when I went into prayer <clears throat> and I said, and I said to our Lord, Lord, I don't, today, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't care if I stay in seminary and I stay on to priesthood. If that happens, that's fine. Because I know that you will be there and it'll all be worth it. And I turned around and I said, and I don't care. I don't care if you make me leave this place and abandon all of the work that I've done over the past few years and all of the confidence that people have, you know, have given to me and their assurances that I'm doing well and make, oh, Kevin, you make a great priest. We really think that you should, really should stay. <clears throat> I said, I don't care. I'll, I'll deal with the fallout. I'll, I'll take it. I'll leave. If that's what you want me to do, then I'll do it because I know that if I leave here, I know that you will be there and you'll make it all worth it. At the heart of our, of our vocations, at the heart of our discernment, has to be uh, that relationship with, with our Lord. This is not something that we, that we do uh, aside from him or apart from him. Our vocation is meant to be the means by which he satisfies us. It's the means by which we lay down our lives in imitation of him and thus grow ever closer to him. So we can't look at our, at our vocation as being trying to figure out just, 
just what is right, what's the right piece here, what's the right piece there, as though it's something that we have to determine and figure out for ourselves and what's the best fit for me in my life. There are, of course, practical considerations to be made all along the way, and some vocations will be better for us than, than others. But in the end, we can always have confidence that that the Lord himself is, uh, is in this journey with us uh, and desires to be close to us. And, you know, there's not really, it, ultimately, there's not really a wrong choice because the Lord himself will never abandon us. He'll be with us throughout all of it. Now, some roads are going to be easier than, than others. Some vocations, uh, I think he's, I, I can't help but feel like as a good friend, he might roll his eyes at us. Uh, if we if we went down that down that path, but it's not as though he's going to uh, he's going to abandon us to a to a poor decision. In fact, even if we um, did go down a road that he would not have picked out for us, he will make his grace abundantly available for us there, and it can become heaven on earth uh, if we'll only will let him in uh, and let him guide us and allow him to satisfy the romantic longings of our heart no matter what we what what vocation we find ourselves living so again tolkien it's a big i'm a big huge fan of his huge fan of his <clears throat> and uh he's been of great help to me over the years that was uh i i happened upon this letter sometime after i'd had that uh that sort of that sort of epiphany within within prayer where he finally said all right lord i i abandon myself to your will if you want me to stay i will stay if you want me to leave i will leave and i don't i don't mind because i know that you're going to satisfy me wherever i go kind of wish that i had uh, found this letter sometime earlier of course maybe i wouldn't have uh, quite understood it or appreciated it as much uh, but i'm happy to be able to share it with as many people as i possibly can it's actually something that i uh, I share regularly with all of the the couples that I prepare for marriage. Now I make them I make them all read it, and uh, some of them some of them like it a lot. Some of them uh, don't like it a whole lot. But it leads us to to have a good conversation. I hope that it's uh, it's helpful to you. I will just read once again this uh, this ending to the this ending to the letter. Out of the darkness of my life so much frustrated, I put before you the one great thing to love on earth, the blessed sacrament. There you will find romance, glory, honor, fidelity, and the true way of all your loves upon earth, and more than that, death. By the divine paradox, that which ends life and demands the surrender of all, and yet by the taste of or foretaste, of which alone can what you seek in your earthly relationships, love, faithfulness, joy, be maintained, or take on that complexion of reality, of eternal endurance, which every man's heart desires. Again, my name is Father Kevin Fox, priest of the Diocese of Cleveland and friend of the Mercerian Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament. I hope and pray that uh, that this talk has been of some help to you. Uh, please know of my prayers for all of you as you uh, discern uh, and grow ever closer to our Lord. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.